and welcome to another Zen Free tutorial. As you can tell by the title of today's video, we're going to be going over how you can create a Zen Free flow that will automate the process of organizing files upon arrival to your Google Drive. We're also going to create a Google Sheet to be able to keep a record of all of these files using Zen Free's powerful AI tools. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. The first step to any Zenfi flow is to set up your trigger. In Zenfi, the trigger is the action that's going to initiate your flow. In this case, we're using the Google Drive trigger, meaning it's going to start the flow whenever a file is added to a specific folder. To be able to do this, we're going to create a new connection by clicking on this plus icon. This connection can be private or shared. You can also give it a name. What this is going to do is grant Zenfi permission to be able to access your Google Drive and monitor the folder. Then all we're going to do is select which folder we want to monitor. To do this, we're going to click on the Google Drive icon, and you're going to be able to select any folder from your Google Drive. Moving on to the actions or steps inside of our flow, the first one that we have is current date and time. For this situation, I'm going to be adding the date and time when it was added to my Google Sheet, as well as the file name. However, I do want it to be in a specific format, which is why I'm using this action. All you have to do is indicate the time zone as well as the format. There's tons of different formats that you can choose from. And there's even an option to select custom and you can create your own format. The next action that we're going to use is going to help us read the document. So this is an OCR document processor. It uses OCR technology as the name implies. So all we have to do is indicate which content we want to process, in this case the file that was added to our drive. To be able to do this, we're going to click on this chain icon. This is called a token picker. It allows us to insert information from previous steps. We're going to be using this quite a bit today. So we're going to click here and we're going to be able to select the content of the file here. All we have to do is click on add token. Now the next action we're going to be using is going to help us indicate which document is being analyzed. This action is called Generative AI. As the name implies, we're going to be using AI technology. So here there is a prompt gallery. There's a couple options there if you want to use one of those. However, you can create your own prompt. As we can see here, it can be a simple sentence, a few words, or a paragraph. The more complex and specific that your prompt is, the more accurate that the result will be as well. All we have to do is indicate the input. In this case, we click on the token picker and we would insert the text content from the previous action and this temperature value as well as the maximum length. Those values do come by default with the action. I would suggest trying with these and if needed, you can adjust from there. In my prompt, I'm basically letting it know that it's going to receive different types of documents and to let me know if it's either an invoice, an NDA, or a purchase order. Now, if we take a look at the Google Sheet that I created for this example, one of the columns is called File Owner. I will be using this to keep a record of who's the owner of the file and it might be needed as well for a step in the future which I will get to in a second. However, some files may have more than one owner but for this specific situation we only need one so we're going to go ahead and filter out to be able to extract just one owner. To do this we're going to use the query collection. We're going to click on the token picker, go to our trigger, and down at the bottom there's going to be a collection called owners, which is all the owners of the file. We're going to select this token, and then we're going to only select the first item. That way it only returns one of the owners. If there's only one, this is going to be the one that will be extracted. If there's more than one, it's going to get the first one. The next step is going to be to add the information from the file to the Google Sheet that I just showed. We're going to use the add row action. Again, we're going to set up our connection to Google Drive. We're going to select which file we want to add the row to. So you would click on the Google Drive icon and select your Google Sheet from here. You're able to select any from your drive. And then you also have to indicate the sheet name. If there's more than one sheet, you would see it here in the drop down menu. If your Google Sheet has a header, you're able to load them by enabling this option here. Now for these, all you have to do is go one by one, indicate which value belongs to which column. So for example, here I have inserted the file name for the date uploaded, the formatted result of the current date and time action from the beginning, and the file owner is the email address from the previous action. As we can see, once we extract that one item, we can get their display name or their email address. Now what I'm going to do is move the file to the folder it belongs to. I have created different folders, one for the invoices, one for the NDAs, and then another one for the purchase orders. That way all of the documents are organized by their document type. 
To be able to do this, I'm going to use this action called switch by value. The input is going to be the output of the generative AI action. So it would be this one right here. Now there's different values that it can take. It can either be an invoice, a purchase order, or an NDA, which is what I indicated in the prompt. However, if it doesn't recognize and it doesn't think it's any of these, there's going to be a default branch. Whenever it's none of the previous values, it's going to go to this branch. You can use this branch to be able to do some error handling, which we'll, we'll do in the next few steps. However, in this case, I'm going to use it to be able to assign a task to someone to manually tell us what document they uploaded. Now, as you can see here, we have the same steps in each branch, so we will go over them really quickly. The first action we have is called move item. So we're going to set up our connection. What we're going to do is indicate which file we want to move. So in this case, if we use a token picker, it would be the file ID from the file in the trigger. Destination folder ID is where we want to move the file to. In this case, since this is the invoice branch, I want to move it to the folder called invoices. To do that, we would click here on the Google Drive icon and find the folder here. And then lastly, you're also able to change the name of the file. So I have put invoice and then the formatted result of the date. And then I have this next action here, which is called update row. What I'm going to do is first set up the connection. We're going to indicate which Google Sheet we want to update. Using the token picker, you're able to edit it from the previous action where we added it to the sheet. So you can get the file ID here. You would indicate the sheet name and the row number. That one you can also get from the previous action here. And what I'm going to do is update the column that was pending with the type of document. So here I would set it as invoice. And for the purchase orders, for example, the only thing that changes is here. I'm moving it to the purchase orders folder. The item has PO at the beginning. Same thing with the NDAs. The folder is NDAs. The item has NDAs at the beginning. Now, however, what happens when it doesn't recognize it as any of these three documents? What we're going to do is use an assign task action. Here you can add a task name, task description, and there's going to be three outcomes. It's going to be NDA, invoice, or purchase order. That way they can click which one they just uploaded. And then down at the bottom, you can add a sender display name. For assigning email, I'm going to add the file owner's email, and then the email subject, and the email body. Basically, just letting them know that the AI tool wasn't able to sort the file if they could just click on which one it is. And I've also added a view link in case they want to look at the document. Here you can add expiry dates as well as reminders. And as you can see, this process is basically the same as this one. What's going to change here in the switch by value is instead of the generative AI, we're going to be using the outcome that they selected from the assigned task. So if we click on the token picker, we can get that here, the response outcome. And the other branches would be exactly the same as the ones I just showed, moving it to the invoices, the name being invoice and the date. However, in this case, the other branch is being used for error handling. So I'm just adding this action called log to history to be able to see a message. And it's going to say no response was received to sort the document and then a view link. And that'd be everything. Let's go ahead and do a test run. We're going to select a file to start. I'm going to use this one pending invoice so it should send it to the invoice folder and we should see that it says invoice in the Google Sheet as well. Okay, and as you can see, it has finished going through the whole flow. If we open up our Google Sheet, here is the file name when it was uploaded as well as the type of document and the file owner. And now if we open the invoices folder, we can see that it's right here as well. And that would be everything. As you can see, it can be very easy to be able to automate the organization process of your file. Remember that Zenfee is very customizable, so feel free to add or remove steps if they aren't necessary for your process. Make sure to check out the rest of our YouTube videos. There we go over different use cases using different triggers and different actions. And you'll also find a link in the description to be able to set up a free demo meeting with our specialized team. There we can go over any questions you may have on Zenfee, go over use cases that may be useful for your business, as well as even help you build your first flow. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them down in the comments section. And we'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.